here affects us all around the country. Only on GB News, the People's Channel, Britain's news channel. GB News is the home of free speech. We were created to champion it, and we deliver it day in, day out. Free speech allows us all to explore and debate openly the issues most important to us, our families, and of course, the British people. Having challenging conversations to enlighten each other. Which is why we hear all sides of the argument. We are the People's Channel. We will always stand by the freedom to express yourself. On TV, radio, and online. This is GB News, Britain's news channel. Hi there, coming up on the Saturday Night Showdown, Joe Biden claimed his uncle was eaten by cannibals in World War II. But something tastes funny about this. Is Biden a liar, senile, confused, or all three? And Hillary Cass, the doctor behind the landmark Cass review into child gender treatment, has been advised to stop using public transport over fears for her safety. Although, to be fair, that's just good advice for anyone. And the National Conservative Conference in Brussels was shut down for public safety. Wow, I feel so much safer knowing the left-wing establishment can shut down political opponents. This is your Saturday Night Showdown. Discussing all tonight's topics with me are my brilliant panel of Precious Muir, Cressida Wetton and Nicholas DeSanto. There they are, over there. But first, let's get your latest news headlines from Sophia Wensler. Thank you, Leo. Good evening. I'm Sophia Wensler in the GB Newsroom. Your top story this hour, the US House of Representatives has approved sending £49 billion worth in foreign aid to Ukraine. Democrats and Republicans joined together after months of deadlock over renewed American support to help Ukraine fend off Russia's invasion. Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky tweeted to say he was grateful for the decision, which he said keeps history on the right track. The policing minister will meet the Met Police Commissioner in the next week to discuss concerns about an officer's comments directed at an anti-Semitism campaigner. Gideon Falter was stopped from crossing a road near a pro-Palestinian march by the officer who described him as quite openly Jewish. The force has since apologised twice. Today, pro-Israel demonstrators held a peaceful counter-protest in central London. Called enough is enough, the group says hatred has no place on the streets of the capital. Can't walk through central London with a yarmulke on your head. No signs of any Israeli flag or support for Israel or any views on, on what may be going on in the Middle East. But if you're not allowed to walk across the streets in central London because you are openly Jewish, then it's time for the government to act. It's just sad that, 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 it's, that, that it's just come to this, that, that it's now regarded as not completely safe for Jewish people to walk in the streets of their own, own, own city. And not only is it distressing and vile as their views are, the distressing thing is also becoming, becoming normalised. Meanwhile, pro-Palestinian protesters have been marching in Sheffield, demanding a ceasefire in Gaza. They're accusing Israel of using famine as a weapon of war and criticise the government for continuing to arm the country. The Palestine Solidarity Campaign also took aim at Barclays Bank, urging it to sever ties with companies which supply weapons and military equipment to Israel. And a two-minute silence is held today, honouring the English men and women who died serving the nation. <music> Hundreds of army and naval cadets took part in a march past the Cenotaph in central London, marking 130 years of the Royal Society of St George. Well, we're big military people, so it means a lot to come down and celebrate and be part of it all, really. It's obviously the patron saint of our country, and uh, obviously I'm the old brigade, and it means something to me. We're English. This is, he's a patron saint of England, so we've got to mark it. Scotland do it, Wales do it. We've got to do it as well, and we've got to do it bigger and better. And for the latest story, sign up to GB News Alerts by scanning the QR code on your screen 
or go to gbnews.com slash alerts. Thank you, Sophia, and welcome to the Saturday Night Showdown. And what a week it's been! Following the publication of the cast review into gender medicine, kids in Scotland who think they're trans will no longer be prescribed puberty blockers, but they'll still be allowed to wear a kilt and see if they like it. Royal Stoke Hospital displayed a banner with 21 gender flags in its reception. What bigots! Where are the other 428 genders? Still, it's good to see the NHS spending money on essential things like gender flags. If they didn't, they'd only waste it on something like kidney machines or radiotherapy. One of the flags represented gender fluid. If you do see gender fluid in a hospital, call for, call for an orderly and they'll mop it up. Reading University denied that its cloud seeding technology caused floods in Dubai, but the university's chemtrail department is suspiciously quiet. Come on, Reading, the people demand the truth! Muslim pupils lost their court case against Catherine Burblesing's incredibly successful school where prayer is banned. So these Muslim pupils joined a school because its system clearly works. But then once they were in, wanted to change the system, though only there's some sort of lesson we could learn from this. Labour revealed that they destroyed documents that could have shown where Angela Rayner said she was living. Oh man, I bet they're kicking themselves. These documents would have probably pr proved that Angela was innocent, but they were shredded. Oh. They must be furious with themselves. There was a backup copy of the documents, but it was stored on Rebecca Vardy's phone, so we won't be getting that. A study revealed that rich people are smoking more than they used to, probably because they're the only people who can afford a packet of cigarettes right now. 18 quid for 20 ciggies. No wonder British people aren't having sex anymore. We can't afford the post-coital smoke. And Brussels proposed visa-free movement in Europe for British young people, but not if they want to go to the National Conservative Conference, which was shut down by Brussels police to guarantee public safety. Wow, Brussels police, thanks for keeping the public safe from these mainstream politicians, who I'm sure were just about to leap from the stage and claw at the public's faces. I feel so much safer knowing that authoritarian leaders can cancel their political rivals. If only Europe could be so robustly conscious of public safety when it comes to enforcing its actual borders instead of the borders around conference venues. Sadly, when it comes to undocumented fighting age men from violent, medieval, misogynist, homophobic cultures entering Europe, it suddenly becomes illegal to guarantee public safety. Still, I'm sure a Janjaweed militant Islamist is much less dangerous than Suella Braverman. It's interesting to see what left-wing left leaders do think is okay, though. The mayor of Brussels himself hosted a radical Iranian politician in Brussels, the mayor of Tehran, who's reportedly overseen women being shot and tortured for protesting and for not wearing a veil, and has been sanctioned by the UK for human rights abuses. So progressive. Being a conservative now is like being in the Sex Pistols. You can display a Union Jack, Guardian columnists scream, ban this filth. The left have managed the unimaginable, making conservatism the refuge of the rebellious. And everyone can see that the speakers at NatCon aren't conspiracists, but are right. Braverman spoke at the conference of how Britain could leave the restrictive European institutions, such as the European Convention on Human Rights. And her argument is surely given a boost. Now we've seen this example of how European institutions Institutions are controlled by the far left and weaponized to persecute political dissidents. Instead of recognizing this as grossly overplaying their hand, the left reveled in it, with jeering laughter in the British Parliament. In a sneak preview of how Keir Starmer's Labour government might treat the opposition, Labour's shadow health minister Wes Streeting said that Suella Braverman in Brussels was in Brussels with some far-right fanatics. No, they're mainstream politicians. Meanwhile, London's police force this week threatened to arrest a man for being openly Jewish. According to the police officer, this could be a breach of the peace. To dig themselves out, the police released a statement, which they've since retracted, saying that opposing the protest could be provocative. Shutting down political opponents, threatening to arrest people for being openly Jewish and allying themselves with Islamists, do left-wing leaders ever stop to consider that they might be the baddies? I'm joined tonight by Precious Muir, 
Cressida Wetton and Nicholas DeSanto now starting off with the shutdown of NatCon. It seems to be a, a step up in leftist authoritarianism. They're literally shutting down mainstream political opposition. Does this worry you, Precious? I mean, I, I would agree. Like, obviously, for me, it's like we're getting too much about what's what's the religious part of things, not actually thinking about what's the, the better part for the human race. Yeah. I think that we're losing the point of, uh, of of like a value actually as as people, and we're getting misconstrued as like race and everything like that. That stuff is kind of like. I don't know, we need to focus on what's happening in the country before we can really decide on the changes that need to be made. Yeah, I mean, the, the National Conservative Conference, uh, Nicholas, did you, did you follow this and it being shut down, being raided by the police? I mean, luckily, the, the court in Brussels, a court in Brussels overturned uh, the, the police uh, action. Uh, so it did go ahead. But yeah, but by then the news was out, and of course it, it tells you it's quite telling of what the EU is all about. You know, if yeah. and ironically and symbolically, it was in Brussels, right, the capital of the super state. Yeah, the hub. The yeah, yeah. Nigel Farage said one one good thing that did come out of it was that Nigel Farage said, you know, despite the way Brexit was mishandled by the British government, I'm I'm paraphrasing, of course, but I'm more than ever happy that we did this thing because that that tells you what the EU is all about. Yeah, it feels like it feels like uh, Nigel Farage has certainly been, uh, you know, to a certain extent, been proved right in all the things that. You know, he said, and all the, all the things that Brexit here said about, about Europe Absolutely. becoming too powerful, too authoritarian. And you said, are we worried about it? I'm delighted. Because now, <laughs> next time somebody says, ah, oh, there's no such thing as cancel culture, we can just point them to YouTube and have a little <laughs> discussion about this. And it got put back on as well, so double win. Yeah, it got put back on. But, I mean, it, it was terrible for the, for the attendees on the day that it was cancelled because the caterers couldn't get in. So they didn't, they only had a handful of canopies <laughs> to keep themselves going. You know, they oh probably didn't God. even have a protein bar in their bag to, to rummage around and find. Uh, and worst of all, uh, none of the booze got delivered either. And, you know, the main reason people go to a conference is for the free booze. Well, I think they're going there to socialise and, and see what they can do. But obviously there was no results um, that actually helped the situation. I think it just made it worse, to be honest. They're not just going there for the booze, are they? They're going there for the dangerous sport of discussing conservative ideas. Well, it does feel that it's dangerous <laughs> at the moment to be, to be right-wing. I mean, there's yeah. organisations, you know, dedicated to, you know, coming after you and, like, uh, and, and shutting down any, uh, any debate and, you know, plucking comments and... Well, yeah. in the words of... Uh, sorry, go on. Well, I, I, I was debating with myself, if I should say. I did a gig last night, and the guy came up to me. The guy who booked me, and he said, oh, uh, they don't know who you are. And I thought, yeah, thanks very much, mate. People never do. <laughs> but what he, he said, no, no, I mean, they don't know who you work for. You know, and it was like, it's so offensive to people. They, they think, oh, it just drives me nuts. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's insane. And also... Uh, also, for a, for a comedian, being told they don't know who you are, that's not the ego boost you need. Yeah, that's kind of like an insult. Like, where do you go from there? Like, I mean, like, yeah. well, you just try to make your point, obviously, and just yeah. make it, like, smash the room, really. Well, there's a comedian, Mike Gunn, who uh, went on stage at Live at the Apollo and he was like, don't worry, I don't know who you are either. <laughs> yeah, there you go. But, so, you yeah. know, Fair it, enough. That, that, that's, in a way, it's good for conservative co comedians because even if you are not funny, you're still uh, very brave. You know, and, and you're not brave because you're overweight or you're autistic and talking about your autism or or, or being gay on stage, yeah. you know, but yeah. you're just, just brave. Just having a pop at feminism in, for 20 In the minutes. words of Paul Joseph Watson, being conservative nowadays is the new punk rock. Because yeah, and you I, are and against I feel, the establishment. I feel like, uh, you know, politicians on the right, they've got more conviction and more passion because nobody's pretending to be right-wing to get an easy life. <laughs> you know exactly. what I mean? It's no. not like being, being left-wing. And something else that, uh, that we touched on in that monologue that, that terrified me this week was the, the man who was, uh, who was apprehended by the police and threatened with arrest, you know, apparently um, for being what the police officer described as openly Jewish. We've, we've actually got the video oh of God. this. Uh, to, to... You are quite openly Jewish. This is a pro-Palestinian march. I'm not accusing you of anything, but I'm worried about the reaction to your presence. If you choose to remain here, because you are called the
Now, in the police's defence, I've got to say that mm. you know they're there to to keep the peace, and yeah. if there's a huge mob, yeah. uh, you know that it's, sa it's that, not well, they, safe they for him. Removed. Yeah, it's, it's not, not safe it's for not him safe to for be him. honest. What it's terrible. very just like you said, conservatives are very brave. As a comedian, a conservative, that guy is acting very brave to be in such a space where he knows that there's predominantly Palestinian people, and he's clearly Jewish with his amaka. He's openly right? Jewish. So he's openly Jewish, and he's visually expressing how he feels. That's very dangerous. Very brave of him, he's, but he's very just dangerous. He's just existing, yeah. to be honest. He's just right. existing on the streets of London. Right. And that's apparently uh, something that, you know, if you're if you're Jewish, the police in that instance said, you need to be removed from the streets of London. Yeah. This is this seems to me... Uh, it's discrimination. A, a, a sort of terrifying... Mm. Hopefully it's a tipping point where we're, something will actually get done about the issue. Yeah. But if, if we've got mobs of people in the streets of London who yeah. won't... Who won't, uh, you know, if they see somebody with a yarmulke, they'll uh, possibly attack I think, him. I think probably the it. police were saying it's just not the right space at this time because for his safety, the police don't want anything to happen to him, but which is streets, fair enough. But he shouldn't. I'm not streets, agreeing with it at all. The streets of London should be safe. I 100 agree with you, but, but it the, is very this, unsafe for him to be in this, that in if, position right now because of what's going on. But if this was a mob of, uh, you know, the far right hooligans, yeah. um, you know, if, if any exist, we hear about them all the time, we never yeah. seem to really see any. But if this is, this is a mob of, you know, say, National Front uh, or, or Combat 18 or, or something like that, you know, mm. the groups from um, from decades ago uh, that were on the, on the hunt or presenting a threat mm. to people of colour, I mean, yeah. I think there'd be much more... The government would immediately step into that. I well, also, listen, I don't, I don't agree with what's going on. I'm just saying, visually, it can be dangerous for a Jewish person to be around those kind of protests as an openly Jewish person because somebody will attack them. But and that's for their else. safety not to be able to, to be in that experience. It's best to just stay away. But not... Just for example, when a person goes to a football match, and as an Arsenal girl... As a gunner's girl, I'm not going to sit in the opposition team just out of safety, not because I shouldn't, but, this man but just out of safety. But this for man myself. wasn't entering a mosque. No, he, no. He was literally just on the streets, and right. I think it's safe for Tottenham fans yeah. and Arsenal fans to walk in the the streets of London. I well, and know. if it was, <laughs> it, it would get shut know, down. Bad, it would get yeah. shut down early doors, wasn't it? And this has been allowed to grow and grow, and over the weeks, people have got bolder with their with their statements that are a bit and um, uh, not a bit, um, but totally should be illegal statements that they mm. shouldn't be allowed to make have been let out of hand, and now the police have got this massive. It's that thing, kill a dragon when it's little, you know, mm. or tame it. It's like it's massive dragon now. That poor police. Yeah, of course yeah. he doesn't want any trouble. What's he going to do if it all of course, kicks off? Primarily, the police job is not worrying for his safety, but uh, ensuring he, 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 he can go about his business in safety. And this is not... I can, I can understand it, he's there as a counter... or he might be there as a counter-protest. Yeah. And, by the way, these counter-protests have been tolerated because when the Cenotaph thing happened and the, the, the pro-Palestinian march wanted to do it on the Armistice Day at the Cenotaph, the police didn't say, no, no, this is illegal because we are worried about, you know, safety. They, they, they allowed them to do that. Yeah. But... And it's not just about protests, because not long ago, there were Jewish schools who did advise their pupils not to carry the yarmulke and not, yeah. not, 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 not to appear Jewish for safety reasons. And, and yeah. there have been arson attacks on, uh, on an MP's office uh, for, for supporting um, Israel or not for, for, not, for not voting the, the way that they wanted. Uh, there was also uh, an allegedly anti-Semitic arson attack on somebody's house as well. So, so much for, thank God, the Germans didn't win the Second World War, right? Well, it certainly yeah. seems that, you know, if, if, the, if the Nazis came back today, mm. they, uh, they'd, they'd probably be delighted with what they can see. Mm. You know, the, the, yeah, the state is now... Yeah, it's true, because of the way the Jewish community have been treated. Yeah. It's really bad. I'm not agreeing with them not being able to walk the streets of London openly and, yeah. and feel safe, but in, we have to be realistic in yeah. the world that we live in. And if I was Jewish and I had to wear a visually Jewish garment, I would wouldn't walk past that Palestinian. Do you know what, though? It makes me think of all the wouldn't. Me Too stuff. Like, Because we often hear that women should be allowed to walk anywhere, any time of night, and so on and so yeah. on. But the more realistic... Be... We're, we're well, the realistic that. thing we're, is... We know but you that's can't not that. the, uh, the fashionable opinion, is that we yeah. should be able to walk yeah. anywhere. And that's how I feel for the Jewish people. Yeah, yeah. and I feel that the mood in these protests has changed. I, I went on uh, pro- uh, or anti-Israel marches back in my... back in my misspent <laughs> youth. You know, we're talking, like, 15 years ago. <laughs> but, uh, that was, uh, you know, the siege of Lebanon... Uh, and, uh, you know, I was dating an Egyptian lassie. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I, wasn't, I wasn't dragged there. But, uh, but, no, I went along and it was, you know, it was... Uh, there, there was positivity and there was people from all different... Um, yeah. You know, all different...
different sides of the political spectrum uh, marching together. And the mood was positivity. Whereas mm. recently I've walked through marches and it's felt like a very negative presence. And I've seen it somebody is. getting chased down Edgware Road. Yeah. And it's been it's been horrific. It's, it's like something that I'm like, turn, I can't I can't believe it's happening. Well yeah. the mood the is exemplified by from the river to the sea. So when that's the slogan. You can imagine the mood. Because yeah. It's, it's, yeah. There's no room for, okay, let's discuss or let's debate and we, we do our thing and you do your counter protest. Yeah. And it doesn't mean that most people there aren't there in good faith because once you get to that size of protest, it, it only needs to be a small portion and it's still enough people to cause a lot of trouble, of right? Course. Yeah. Still not saying everyone there is. Not everyone's is mindset is exactly the same, like you're saying. They're not all thinking yeah. in, in, in this vile, but, disgusting way, but, but there is a few of them that are that make the Jewish community uncomfortable. And they could do something. So, you know the the rest of the people, if they are you know of good faith or whatever, they could do something to stop it. They could they could speak out. They could stop yeah. it happening in the yeah. mob. That it would be good. It would be part good. Of. Anyway, coming up, we will assess the week's winners and losers in Cursed or Blessed. This week, there's Tory sleaze. Is there ever not Tory sleaze? School prayer, prayer bans and Joe Biden's WW2 cannibal claim. And we'll show you what happened when one woman attempted to clean her car. Britain's Newsroom, weekday mornings from 9.30. Men's mental health, yeah. men are starting to talk a lot more. Yeah. You've been through a lot of stuff that uh, people don't know about. Yeah, I mean, um, the last few years for me have been very, very difficult. Um, people, don't, people see me on tour, performing, making music. Um, but um, myself and my wife, um, you know, we went through... Um, two miscarriages, oh, um, wow. you know, and, you know, for us, that was a very devastating mm. of time and very difficult to, to, to know how to kind of process those emotions. Mm. And I guess as a man, I, I did the thing of bottling up my emotions and where I feel comfortable to, to be able to express myself is in the studio, whereas, you know, she had obviously a different reaction to, you know, what happened to us because not only was it happening to her mentally, psychologically, but it was happening to her physically as well. And I think what something that she really w would wanted to see from me was that sensitivity and that emotion. And I thought that as a man, being strong was trying to bottle up my emotions and just show her that, no, mm. you know, that I'm, I'm being strong for her. Mm. But actually being strong was is talking about it. Mm. And what's happened ever since I've started to talk about it is I've spoken to more men that have experienced baby loss. My wife forced out of me, you know, how do you feel? And I ended up as a mess on the floor. I was exasperating, crying, mm -hmm. almost inconsolable. She was just holding me in her arms um, as we cried together, and we cried together. Um, and I didn't realise I needed that release so badly. Like I said, I've been able to speak to other men, and, and, and we've been able to cry together, and they've, they shared their own experiences, which they did similar to me. But actually, you know, as men, I feel like that mm -hmm. conversation and that sensitivity and being able to be mm -hmm. emotional together I'm Andrew Doyle. Join me at 7 o'clock every Sunday night for Free Speech Nation, the show where I tackle the week's biggest stories in politics and current affairs with the help of my two comedian panellists and a variety of special guests. Free Speech Nation, Sunday nights from 7 on GB News, the People's Channel, Britain's news channel. Every Sunday from 11, join Michael Portillo. There will be topical discussion, looking at the week before and the week to come. So kick back and relax at 11 a.m. on Sundays on GB News with me, Michael Portillo. GB News, the people's channel, Britain's news channel. Good afternoon, Britain. Good afternoon, Britain. Weekdays from midday, we bring you the most compelling stories from across the United Kingdom. And why it matters to you. From your doorstep to our inbox. That's right, we want to hear from you. Good afternoon, Britain. Only on GB News, the People's Channel, Britain's news channel. On Mark Dolan tonight, in my big opinion, working is a national duty. It's time for lazy Brits to wake up and smell the coffee. In my take at 10 after a humiliating double apology, British policing is no longer fit for purpose. And has Joe Biden finally lost the plot? I'll be asking America's psychiatrist, Dr. Carol Lieberman, plus top royal author Tom Bauer and political double act The Hamiltons. We're live at nine.
Welcome back to the Saturday Night Showdown. Kirster Blessed is coming up, but first I promised I would show you what happened when one woman attempted to clean her car. Let's have a look. Oh. I mean, doesn't this just show that you should really let a car wash do the work? Take Precious. it to a professional, I think. That's, that's all I can say, because that was she overpowering. <laughs> she was what committed. was she thinking? I mean, also, what could have happened if she let go? Yeah, That, that hose would still be, in the still be going. You're right, she could have lost her dignity. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. OK, well, it's now time to go through the winners and losers of the week in Kirster Blessed. Allegations that the MP Mark Menzies misused Tory campaign funds have been referred to Lancashire Police. Now, most of us have had a wild night out, but most of us probably haven't ended up calling a 78-year-old colleague and demanding company funds to pay off people who are holding us hostage, unless we've ended up back at Joy Boy George's house. But that's allegedly what happened, not the Boy George's house bit, to, to, to Scottish Tory MP Mark Menzies. He lost a Conservative whip this week after his former campaign manager claimed he telephoned her at 3.15am asking for £5,000 to pay bad people who had locked him into a flat and wanted money because apparently he'd been sick everywhere. The Labour Party wrote to Lancashire Police yesterday morning calling for an investigation. Menzies has denied the allegations, but I still want to go for a pint with him. It sounds like it would be a brilliant <laughs> night out. Now, why do these uh, sleazy accusations always seem to happen to, the, to Tories? Are they just the most fun party, Cressida? It looks like it, doesn't it? I mean, that's amazing. Five grand for a bit of sick. Well, and, it, and it went up to six and a half grand. Oh, it's, my. Oh, oh, and that also, is awful. Nicholas, this, this gets even even more, even more sadder. So th this is uh, Shirley Green as constituency office manager. So, so she's 78 and um, she cashed in her ISA uh, to, to... Well, this is what she claims. She, she claims she cashed in her ISA to, to pay him, to pay this ransom, to get him out of this flat. Uh, but, I mean, credit to her for her loyalty to the party. So but, dedicated, uh, yeah, yeah. And it? It had risen to six and a half grand, which, to be honest, would probably buy you the flat. In Scotland, <laughs> but, I mean, do you, do you think this is going to damage uh, the Tories? I mean, they I mean seem to this be doing is so a well. time. I mean, the <laughs> Tories can catch a break, right? Or Tory support. I mean, they 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 need all the MPs, especially from Scotland, that they they can get. Yeah, yeah. Uh, of course, uh, this is not helpful. I think this might win them some votes in Scotland. We we like somebody <laughs> who goes out a mad rager. <laughs> I mean, Scotland is ahead of the game, I feel like, because they're doing stuff, they're changing stuff, they're allowing stuff to happen that we're just not having happen what in London. What sort of things is Scotland allowing Well, to they're happen, allowing... Do? Well, obviously, they're, they're actually forwarding thinking in regards to stopping the medication for children to actually... Oh, that, that was stopped in, yeah. stopped in the rest of Britain first. Oh, was so it? And okay. actually, the SNP sort of lagged and they, were, they weren't going to do it because oh. the SNP always likes to do things differently to okay. Westminster. <laughs> right. Uh, to say, oh, we're skilled, we do things differently. Yeah. Uh, but then it turned out in this case that, uh, you know, pumping kids full of hormones and puberty blockers and giving them surgery, you know, might not be... Uh, the I would agree. Thing to do after, 100% after the don't agree with out. it, yeah. Um, but I've, I've got to ask, you know, would any of you, uh, if I phoned you at 3.15 in the morning demanding five grand uh, to pay some bad people, would you do it? <laughs> no, I'll give you Lewis's number and say, <laughs> go away. If Lewis doesn't have that if kind of money. If you promise me a, a lot of um, Saturday Night Showdown appearances, <laughs> <laughs> a block booking, I might. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Lee, I would have to say no, I'm afraid. <laughs> <laughs> well, I know where I stand. I guess oh, I'll never be true. a Tory MP now. Maybe he was uh, on an Airbnb uh, rental and he was uh, afraid of his ratings going down. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's, that's what happens if well, you I think you've got to get a five-star rating if you, if you hand over six and a half grand from an old woman's ISA. Anyway, oh, Joe Biden has claimed that his uncle, who served in World War II, was shot down in the Pacific and eaten by cannibals. Uh, the Pentagon, however, said that Biden's uncle's plane crashed into the ocean shortly after taking off. So unless these cannibals were mermaids, Biden would appear to be lying. Although perhaps that's being too harsh on a man who doesn't know what day of the week it is. The White House press secretary said Biden had an emotional moment. Has he finally lost it? Although I'm, I'm... My uncle, they called him Ambrose, uh, Brosie, they called him Bosey. My uncle Bosey was a hell of an athlete. They'd tell me when he was a kid. And he became an Army Air Corps before the Air Force came along. He flew those single-engine planes as reconnaissance over war zones. And he got shot down in New Guinea. And uh, they never found the body because there used to be there were a lot of cannibals. 
Oh, this is getting kind of sad now. Every time I see Biden, it's like watching one of those adverts for a donkey sanctuary. You know what I mean? I mean Why are they making this guy do all this work? This is really because sad to see him Kamala, kind of... So. He's deteriorating in front of our eyes and nobody's yeah. stopping it. Yeah. And I really do feel bad for him. His wife has to take him off stage most of the time. I just think he needs to step down, retire and let Camilla Harris become president. I well, mean, that's... it would just be amazing for I, her to be president. I don't know if Kamala would be a fantastic president, but I think she definitely I think she'd be fantastic. Have oh, <laughs> you seen what she's like as vice president? She's doing oh, really she, well. She's, she's bringing actually... back a lot of things that we're taking out, like obviously the right to actually have an abortion. Yeah. That is actually going to be turned around. I'm pretty certain it's going to be back on to the policies available for women. But her, in the her US. ratings, that's her, super important. her approval ratings are actually magically. I don't know how she manages to do this. They're worse than Joe Biden's, which is some <laughs> achievement. But I mean, uh, Precious makes a good point, Nicholas. That. Joe Biden should be stepping down. In fact, Donald, Donald Trump is, out of all the candidates for the Republican Party, he's the least likely to win. And Joe Biden, out of all the candidates for the Democrat <laughs> Party, is the least likely to win. They're both trying... It looks like they're trying to lose. I mean, Trump is leading in virtually all uh, polls, but Kamala Harris... By a Harris, couple of points. Uh, which, which, which says a lot, because usually, as we've seen previously, he outperforms his polls by a large margin because many people are shy or, you know, out of spite for mainstream media. Yeah. Many of his supporters don't declare that they but are... But, like, Nikki Haley, for example, would have been 17 points clear of Biden. Yeah, but she, she wouldn't win the primaries, so, so it's not going to happen. Anyway. The thing is, they will never elect a woman. That's the thing. They couldn't care less if she was right or not. They just don't want to have a female president. I, I, think, I, I think they would. I mean, I think Hillary, Hillary came very close. She was just stymied by the fact that, you know, she's uh, really terrible and, and, and very annoying. <laughs> So, yeah, I can't even say but that. But Kamala word. makes Hillary look like Miss Congeniality. It's I mean, her, it's her voice. <laughs> you thanks died. to Kamala. Oh my God. We did it, Joe. We uh, did it. First of all, thanks to Kamala, I've learned the expression wart salad. You, know, I mean, <laughs> you should, should use some of those clips for your, for your uh, you know, video segments. But, but the thing is, Democrats, the Democratic Party itself is so terrified of Kamala, you know, becoming the. That's why they are yeah. wheeling Joe Biden everywhere. And yeah. <laughs> literally wheeling him. Oh I just want to say. In a wheelbarrow. Uh, the, the whole... My, my favourite co comedian, Norm Macdonald, had a big bit about his... So I was your favourite comedian. Well, uh, you are my living favourite comedian because, sadly, Norm Macdonald uh, passed away. Uh, but um, Norm Macdonald had a big bit about his campaign against cannibalism because it was so easy <laughs> for people to get behind and there would be no counter-protest, so it was easy. <laughs> so as Biden is hemorrhaging support, even with blacks and Hispanics and in all, in all departments, it looks like he's found an easy platform to run on, anti-cannibalism. Anti-cannibalism. <laughs> Maybe it'll save Biden, uh, Biden's campaign. Anyway, moving on, Catherine Burblesing, who's dubbed Britain's strictest head teacher and definitely the one that gets the best results, is celebrating this week after the High Court upheld her school's ban on prayer rituals, which is designed to allow kids to focus on studies instead of prayer. A Muslim student at Burble Singh School said the decision to ban prayer was discriminatory. The High Court judge ruled, though, that when the student enrolled at Michaela School, she knew there would be restrictions on her ability to manifest her religion. Burble Singh has hailed her win as a victory for all schools. Now, Catherine Burblesing's system clearly works. Why on earth did they want to change it? I, do you know, if you'll excuse the expression, the balls on that mother. It's just <laughs> extra... She's got a second, I think, daughter who she wants to enrol in the school now. After right. having... I mean, at this point, if you were genuinely that upset about the way your daughter had been treated, you'd take the daughter out of the school, right? But actually, of course, what she wants is the great results that the Michaela School delivers. Right. But um, to change yeah, the because, system that delivers those results. Yeah, exactly. Because, I mean, they get great GCSE results and they're yeah. just, you know, kind of doing the thing in regards to education. But she's not understanding that if you're going to expect to change somewhere that's already successful, it doesn't make sense. If it, you want to no, go to doesn't. a religious school, go to a religious school. I went to a Catholic school. I knew exactly what it was about. In the morning, you pray and then you go to, to, to your classes. That is what a religious school is about. This is not what that is. So yeah. if you want to have your prayer and Muslim faith understood in school, then you need to go to a school that has that. I think the, 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 the reason for confusion on your side or partial confusion, understandably, is that maybe we subscribe to the premise that people are essentially the same. But if anything, these recent events have shown us with the pro-Hamas and pro-terrorist marches and sympathies that we were talking about briefly. Um, yes, they want their children to do well, but more importantly, it's about political domination. And in Islam, a mosque 
is a symbol of conqu conquest. A prayer room and public prayer is a symbol of domination, is a symbol of victory over the Christians. So I, mean, that's I think, I think a lot yeah. of people, a lot of Muslims would say that's, that's not the case. It's just, you know, a religious, it's a religious building, well, well, just like they a church. They don't know the, well, well, I, but you I can have But you can't also cater to one and not the other. Iran, so it's, so you're, it's you're, you're educated from Iran, so you got, yeah, right, yeah, which yeah, I, I yeah, guess is a theocracy. So in, in Iran... Yeah, yeah, but yeah, Friday prayers, for example, if you go to Iran, Friday, Friday prayers are uh, led by political leaders. And uh, Khomeini famously said, our politics is the same as our religion, and our religion is the same as our politics. Because, in, in fact, Prophet Muhammad was the head of state and the head of the treasury and the uh, commander-in-chief. Yeah. Unlike Jesus, who said, give to Caesar what belongs to Caesar and give to uh, God what belongs to Separation of but state it, it and religion. it clearly works in Iran, because it's a famously uh, tolerant and successful and prosperous country. Yeah, the girls it, get really good GCSEs, <laughs> don't they? Yeah, well, if that's they're, like, they're even allowed mom, in the school. Maybe this mom would, 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 would aspire that. And one, one last quick thing. The, another um, uh, outrageous element of this whole story is that she has spent tens of thousands in legal fees provided by legal aid. So, so taxpayers the taxpayer money. was paying yes. for this? Oh, yeah. my God. <laughs> That's, I, mean, I should just, uh, I should just add, uh, just uh, to defend the other parents at the school. And one the, last the... thing, I promise. She's also applied for her second child to join in, while at the same time threatening yeah, them that she would, uh, she would, she would make yeah, sue them just, over just, that as well. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, just to, just to, um, just to clarify, the other uh, parents of Muslim children at the school mm. uh, were apparently, on the whole, horrified by this, by this. Yeah, because so you can't wanted... cater to one and not the rest. Yeah. that's as simple as that. Mm. All the children are seen equally the same. Yeah. You can't then decide that person needs to then have a prayer room and this person is... It's not fair. It's Absolutely. just all round equal for every child in the school. Equality, that's what we want. That's right. Anyway, next on the Saturday Night Showdown, Hilary Cass, the paediatrician behind the landmark Cass Review into child gender treatment, has revealed she's been advised to stop using public transport over fears for her safety. Plus, I'll show you what happened when one group of lads tried to film their own music video. Good evening, welcome to your latest GB News weather from the Met Office. High pressure is sticking around through the rest of the weekend, but we will start to see some rain arriving in the north. But it is that area of high pressure that will be dominating our weather, so bringing us some more settled conditions over these weather fronts out to the north will bring us a bit more in the way of rain as we head through Sunday and into the new week. Plenty of cloud around through the rest of this evening, spilling its way southwards across much of England and into parts of Wales into the early hours of the morning. But southeastern parts of England, Northern Ireland, Western Scotland probably holding on to some clearer skies and turning chilly here, perhaps some frost in places. But under all that cloud, generally not quite as cold, although the high single figures are possible. So a bit of a cloudy start, particularly for eastern parts of Scotland, some outbreaks of rain spilling their way southwards through Sunday morning. But eastern parts of England, Northern Ireland, Western Scotland still holding on to some of that sunshine. Perhaps one or two showers across the very far southeast, but it should be staying dry for most places away from that cloud and rain. Under that cloud and rain, still feeling quite chilly. We're struggling to reach into the double figures across some North Sea coast. But further south, highs of 14 or 15 degrees. Monday does start a little bit cloudier for most of us. Outbreaks of rain spreading their way southwards across much of the UK through Monday, perhaps southeastern parts of England holding on to a bit of sunshine through the afternoon and feeling warm in that sunshine, but much chillier elsewhere. Further showers through Tuesday and Wednesday, but those temperatures slowly starting to return closer to average as we head through the second half of the week. GB News is the home of free speech. We were created to champion it, and we deliver it day in, day out. Free speech allows us all to explore and debate openly the issues most important to us, our families, and of course, the British people. Having challenging conversations to enlighten each other, which is why we hear all sides of the argument. We are the people's channel. We will always stand by the freedom to express yourself. On TV, radio, and online. This is GB News, Britain's news channel. Are the newspapers getting you down? My wife didn't divorce me that month. <laughs> <laughs> Struggling to separate the wheat from the chaff. I know that it's a bit of a circus at the best of times. <laughs> well, don't worry. Headliners has got you covered. We'll take the burden of reading the day's news, and if we get depressed, who cares? It's an occupational hazard, frankly. That's Headliners on GB News from 11pm till midnight, and the following morning, 5 till 6am, on GB News, the comedy channel. Nah, just kidding. Britain's news channel. 
I'm Christopher Hope. And I'm Glory DiPiero, bringing you PMQ's live here on GB News. Whenever Parliament is in session on a Wednesday at midday, we'll bring you live coverage of Prime Minister's questions. We'll be asking our viewers and listeners to submit the questions that they would like to put to the Prime Minister. And we'll put that to our panel of top politicians in our Westminster studio. That's PMQ's live here on GB News, Britain's election channel. Welcome back to the Saturday Night Showdown. Culture Corner is coming up, but first, I promised I would show you what happened when one group of lads attempted to film their own music video. <laughs> That's what we need. So that, that wasn't warning. a prop then, He's was it? Absolutely oh fine. my goodness! He's absolutely fine. I know it looked like he gave himself some uh, early gender transition surgery <laughs> there, but no, he is absolutely fine. His feet are fine. He's just giving himself a bit of a scare. And, um, wow! It does make you a bit worried about, uh, you know, if you're going to wave people wave guns around like that, yeah. they sometimes they sometimes go off. I mean, a man does a gunsmith. We're taught proper gun safety rules. I'm never allowed to, allowed to wave them around enough. I, I don't believe in guns. I don't believe that we should be able to have them, especially this young boy here. I mean, he yeah. has no sense, obviously, to be putting it in his pants. So but there we go. To counter that argument, if we don't have guns, how are we going to shoot stuff? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, well, yeah, we you know, the person that should be having a gun obviously is authority, and anybody else, I don't believe that they should have a gun. Well, as the oh, host of this show, as the host of this show, I am the authority. And then you can have a the <laughs> conference so anyway, in Brussels. Dr. If Dr. Hilary Cash, the woman behind the landmark report into transgender children, has been told not to travel in public transport amid fears over her personal safety. In an interview with the Times newspaper, Dr. Cass said that disinformation had been spreading surrounding her report, in particular calling out Labour MP Don Butler, who said Cass didn't include more than 100 transgender studies in her review. Dr. Cass also said that she'd received a string of abusive emails and had taken on security advice following the publication of her report. Now, the Cass review feels like a watershed moment. Could gender treatment be the medical scandal of our time? Oh, without a doubt. With, I mean, you just have to watch one sad detransitioner video and it's heartbreaking. I didn't... It, it took me a long time to even really understand what transitioning was because you just can't believe it. You, the idea that you would lose your genitals. I know that's much later down the line, but it, it's just extraordinary to me. So, yeah, I think it's... I think it is the scandal. I think second only to abortion, which they have put on a pedestal and rebranded as uh, reproductive health care, or in some languages, like in Italian, voluntary termination of pregnancy. You know, you can sugarcoat it and use all these. But I think, at the end of the day, uh, abortion and uh, the abuse of these uh, impressionable, sometimes uh, really um, abused and... Uh, Problematic kids. Well, because quite vulnerable. often they've got people yeah, look back at, they've got at, mental, at our times. And, exactly. Quite often they've got mental conditions, and there's a big connection with autism. But I think I think it's wrong that you're comparing uh, somebody having a, an abortion to this. That, that they're totally two different things. No, it's, uh, um, they're not. They're, they're not the same. Just so you know, a woman's right to have an abortion is totally different than someone putting, uh, giving medications and surgery to a child. No, I'm comparing them because in both cases you have a defenseless creature. Obviously, the unborn baby is even more defenseless, but. Not but the child is yet to be a baby. We would mm. disagree on this, but the of child course, is yet but... to be a baby yet, and it doesn't have all the organs as, as it would if you're terminating in a certain period of time. Secondly, that's an adult choice, mm. and that person has the right to do that. As a woman, she should have the right because of circumstances where it may have led to the reasoning behind her having well, that's abortion. Another debate. But the second thing is that the child is not in control of his feelings at that time because he hasn't developed or she hasn't developed yes, yet. So, in both cases, so yes, I agree that they shouldn't. Get back to the thing we're talking in about. Both yeah. cases. <laughs> Sorry, I just have, as a woman, I've yeah. got to say in something. In both like... cases, we have adults deciding for another child because after a few weeks... But, is that, but I mean, a lot of kids, even the a lot of kids, baby will, will, a lot of kids are saying, as, uh, in school, they're saying, oh, I've, I identify as whatever gender, right. you know, I think I'm transgender. And there's been... Uh, you can actually see in the, the mm. Google mapping of search terms, um, this, it's sort of replaced uh, eating disorders. It's replaced anorexia as something yeah. that 
um, that young... Uh, it is seen to be women, trending. It's a it, trend. Yeah, it's become a social contagion. So, and it's yeah. become a way of, uh, you know, teenagers to, to exert power over their bodies. Because just it's to see marketed the as, an, as a fashionable, easy fix. You yeah. know, because kids, especially yeah. teenagers, they but have their I own think issues. The, I think the, the, tide, the gender, all your the problems tide is now The tide is now turning because we can see now even mainstream comedy shows, you know, establishment, regime-approved comedy shows such as Have I Got News For You are making jokes about gender treatment. We've got a clip from Have I Got News For You Now. With health, what yes. did staff at the Royal Stoke Hospital do this week? The answer is we don't know. Yes, <laughs> they made a banner declaring that the hospital welcomes 21 different genders and sexualities. Mm, 21? There they are. Wow. I don't know some of those countries. <laughs> <laughs> That's Zimbabwe at the end. Yeah. <laughs> Each of these 21 genders has its own flag, and why not? You know, now cancer's been cured and everything. <laughs> <laughs> so that's a clear sign that the tides are turning. It's just a shame that, you know, it's such a, such a vital, satirical show didn't get around to mocking was gender that the BBC? ideology. Was that the BBC? That was the BBC. What? That's a <laughs> know, shocking clip, isn't it? They should have been making these jokes 10 years ago. They could I have agree with you. Maybe saved some the party. kids. Anyway, Queen Charlotte was a person of colour. A museum's LGBT audio guide has wrongly claimed. The audio guide for the Royal Museums in Greenwich tells visitors that despite what insecure white boys, I think they're talking about me, have said <laughs> George III's wife was the first British royal from a non-white background. The consensus among historians, however, is that she was very clearly not B-A-M-E. Now, have the museum's curators been watching too much Bridgerton? Well, as a person who was born and raised in Greenwich, I'm going to support the museum. I was born in <laughs> Greenwich Hospital and I do support the fact that they have been researching. There are pictures. I'm not saying she's directly half mixed race like myself, but there is some, there is African or Portuguese ancestry down the line in her bloodline because she does look of mixed origin from the pictures, paintings that we've seen. But have they done any sort of definitive research, you know, DNA on a hair strand or something like this? Because I, I'm worried but she that was we can't... born in 1744. People had hair then. Right, but I mean, they didn't have the same technology that oh, we yeah, have but, now. I mean, DNA uh, research now. I mean, there must no, be bits but of. There's no way of knowing. The really. there, must be, there must be a toenail clipping no, or something. There's no toenail clipping. Well, this there, is all. There must this be. Is, excuse me. The, 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 the same organization, Greenwich National Museums, yeah. or National uh, Greenwich Maritime Museums, Maritime Museum. Uh, they came out and they basically distanced themselves from, from it. They said this was done lightheartedly, this was part of the LGBT, oh, right. the tour, it was not fact. They didn't mean to do it. Uh, the, the, the historian who has uh, come up with the content for the guide openly calls himself the homosexual historian who wants to give you a lot of funny gay stories about history. Right. But if you ask me, at the end of the day, Ironically, all these attempts at revisionism and rewriting the history um, ironically proves alt-right and far-right right. Because it's no longer about people of different cultures coming together, believing in the same common core values, because that's, that was also par paradoxical. Because, and we, again, we see it with Hamas and everything, because if we come from different cultures, we don't have the same core values. But what do the alt-right and far-right say? They say, in order to make a nation, it takes more than just paying your taxes and speaking English. Yeah. We are not even at that, but OK. <laughs> uh, they say, you need to have common history and common ancestry. And these pathetic attempts, when they go after, you know, painting back our history and revisioning everything and making Joan of Arc transgender or making yeah. Shakespeare black and all that, ultimately, ironically, it proves the far right's point right. Right. I don't understand. But anyway, <laughs> those campaigning for Britain to rejoin the EU have gone to another extreme this week by trying to convince Brits that they're missing out on their favourite European cuisine. The Rejoin EU party shared this image on X, which is what we call Twitter now, apparently, claiming that Brits want back in the EU for cheap, tasty meals, menus with exotic flavours and authentic, knowledgeable chefs. Now, I'm pretty sure I had spaghetti bolognese for dinner last <laughs> night. I mean, this is nonsense. We, we, st we still get the food. You can still go down to Tesco, buy some spaghetti, mm -hmm. buy some, you know, whatever you want, dolmio, some classic Italian food. And if we couldn't, we'd get food. someone to bring some over on a little boat when they're crossing <laughs> Why has it got two eyes? My What's God. that all about? I don't know. Oh, <laughs> I, I, did, I wondered if I'd missed something if I was Most being Most people fit. got two eyes. No, so it rejoin I. Yeah, yeah. Rejoin had two eyes. Oh, yeah. that, that What's that all about? Okay, well, there you go. Oh, no, yeah, look. What's yeah, why? 
Oh, I thought, yo, 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 have yo. I missed something? They, anyway. they didn't want to waste any spaghetti. But you know what that is? Oh, that's done, see, in, that's yeah. done in AI. Mm. That's done in AI, so it's spell it. Yeah. Really. Right. Okay. Well, I think it's just because obviously the cost of stuff has gone up. So that's what it is. They're yeah, saying the that of, you can still. The cost of stuff has gone up. The cost of food yeah. has gone up everywhere. Everywhere, that's what I mean. Yeah, yeah. More and various other factors. And the fact that our governments keep printing ridiculous amounts of money. Well, that's what's their problem. That's what their excuse or their, you know, what they're saying is that the price of the Italian food has gone up. Yeah. So that's but why. But it's gone up in Italy as well. Which, yeah. you know, <laughs> seems to be maybe political... Brexit is bad for everybody. Anyway, next on the like... Saturday Night Showdown, it's time for Clown World, where we'll be diving into conspiracy theories that have been making the rounds this week. Plus, I'll show you what happened when this couple decided to race one another. Are you guys ready? Yeah. One, two, three. <laughs> Martin Dalby, weekdays from 3 p.m. Mark White was saying there, Sue, that he thinks it's getting worse. And you, again, you were nodding along to that. You've, you've seen this over decades. Situation is sprawling along the coast, more people, yes. and the danger is ramping up. Definitely, um, because the, the numbers and the money is... It's run like a military operation. Mm. I mean, I've been told that by the National Crime Agency and I don't need to be told it by them to know it. It is meticulous because there's so much money involved. So they're, they're marshalling migrants here, the gangs, they're controlling the gangs, and there will be a Mr a Kingpin, mm. you know, in some city far away in Erbil or even in Paris or in Brussels who never goes anywhere near the beaches. It's like a Ponzi scheme, really. Yeah. With that in mind, um, there's such vested interest, such money, such demand, a never-ending string of demand of people who yes. want to come here. How people are Earth... already on their way, remember? Yeah. If we stop them now, they're already leaving... There's people leaving the Sudan now are going to reach the only place they want to get to, the French beaches, to get to the UK. They'll arrive in two and a half years' time. And so, you see, they're on their way. If it's that organised, that lucrative, that desirable, how on earth do we ever break that chain? I, um, it sounds incredibly harsh, but I'm sure... I think if the EU uh, change uh, politically in the June elections, which I think it probably will, yes. I think they will put up, as the Greeks have done, holding camps all over Europe, the coasts of Europe, where people are reassessed, assessed just to see who is coming in, which would be a plus, mm. as the Greeks have done, because we have no idea who is coming in. Join me, Camilla Tomini, every Sunday at 9.30 when I'll be interviewing the key players in British politics and taking them to task. And this report basically says that he's not fit to stand trial. With an upcoming election looming over Westminster, now is the time for clear, honest answers. I agree. And that's precisely what I'll get. Is he indecisive? Incompetent? That's the Camilla Tomini Show at 9.30 every Sunday on GB News, the People's Channel, Britain's election channel. In the GB Newsroom, we bring you the news as it happens. With our team of dedicated journalists across the UK, GB News brings you accurate reporting of the day's topical agenda. When the news breaks, wherever and whenever it's happening, we'll be there. This is GB News. The People's Channel, Britain's news channel. I'm Patrick Christie's. This is GB News, the People's Channel, Britain's news channel. Welcome back to the Saturday Night Showdown. Clown World is coming up, but first I promised I would show you what happened when one couple decided to race each other. Are you guys ready? Yep. One, two, three. <laughs> I mean, the, she doesn't check to see she if doesn't it's even okay. look back. She's, she's, just, she's just going. She's winning the, the race. She doesn't care. Yeah. Like, she wants to make sure that was caught on camera. Yeah, just yeah. check, yeah. And it was obviously in a hotel, so she was worried about getting caught by the staff. But anyway, there's been a right deluge in Dubai this week as the city was hit by more than a year and a half's worth of rain in just one day, although it is Dubai. So that's not a huge amount of rain. If it was Britain, it'd be quite a lot of rain. Well, experts say the downpour in the desert was due to a large weather system. Some have 
blamed new cloud seeding technology, which electrically charges clouds to produce raindrops in a bid to reduce drought in the region. Reading University has been working with the Gulf state to develop cloud seeding, and some of it involves aircraft firing salt flares up into clouds to induce condensation. It sounds very suspicious. And the university was forced to deny that this technology could have been responsible. Now, I don't know. This sounds a conspiracy theory. There's been a, a long-running one is that the government controls the weather. And here... The first time I heard it, I thought, oh, it's just Lewis mouthing off again. <laughs> but what I don't understand is, even if they can make it rain, surely there can only be so much water in there. They they're not adding any yeah. water, are they? So well, I that, believe that's them. Why, that's why Reading University denied the cla oh. claim. So, you know, they said... But they say not... they've been doing this kind of controversial thing since the 90s, the salt flares into yeah. the sky, obviously, with using planes. So it is, it does exist. Yeah, and sometimes there is actual they... evidence of <laughs> pictures of them doing so. Sometimes they do it before events to try and get it to rain yeah. before the events exactly. and then it doesn't rain because, the because Dubai is extremely hot. I mean, yeah. I don't know if you've been, but I've been many times, especially during Fashion Week, and they've actually had to have Fashion Week during the night because it's so warm yeah. during the day and the models will be sweating and makeup will be going and outfits will be ruined. So I did a gig it is in a Dubai. thing. I went out to Dubai to do some shows and it was yeah. in August and I walked down to the beach. I thought, you know, because you can't... It's like being on the moon. You can't yeah. leave a building. You need to be in air condition. Yeah. I walked down to the beach and by the time I got to the beach, I was almost dead and I thought, I'll go in the water <laughs> to cool down. The water was roasting as well. Yeah. It was it's crazy. Worst. It is crazy. So if they have to use those planes to get a little bit of rain, then so yeah. be it. Anyway, that's the show tonight. Thanks to my brilliant panel, Precious Muir, Crest and Wetton and Nicholas DeSanto. See you again next week. And don't forget headliners as well tonight at 11pm. Goodbye. Looks like things are heating up. Boxed boilers. Sponsors of weather on GB News. Good evening. Welcome to your latest GB News weather from the Met Office. High pressure is sticking around through the rest of the weekend, but we will start to see some rain arriving in the north. But it is that area of high pressure that will be dominating our weather, so bringing us some more settled conditions. However, these weather fronts out to the north will bring us a bit more in the way of rain as we head through Sunday and into the new week. Plenty of cloud around through the rest of this evening, spilling its way southwards across much of England and into parts of Wales into the early hours of the morning. But southeastern parts of England, Northern Ireland, Western Scotland probably holding on to some clearer skies and turning chilly here, perhaps some frost in places. But under all that cloud, generally not quite as cold, although the high single figures are possible. So a bit of a cloudy start, particularly for eastern parts of Scotland. Some outbreaks of rain spilling their way southwards through Sunday morning. But eastern parts of England, Northern Ireland, Western Scotland still holding on to some of that sunshine. Perhaps one or two showers across the very far southeast, but it should be staying dry for most places away from that cloud and rain. Under that cloud and rain, still feeling quite chilly. We're struggling to reach into the double figures across some North Sea coast. But further south, highs of 14 or 15 degrees. Monday does start a little bit cloudier for most of us. Outbreaks of rain spreading their way southwards across much of the UK through Monday, perhaps southeastern parts of England holding on to a bit of sunshine through the afternoon and feeling warm in that sunshine, but much chillier elsewhere. Further showers through Tuesday and Wednesday, but those temperatures slowly starting to return closer to average as we head through the second half of the week. A brighter outlook with Bob Solar, sponsors of weather on GB News. With thanks to Variety Cruises, a family company sailing since 1942, you have the chance to win a £10,000 seven-night small boat cruise for two. With flights, meals, excursions and drinks included, you'll be able to choose from any one of their 2025 Greek adventures and explore Greece like never before. Plus, you'll also win £10,000 in tax-free cash to make your summer sizzle. And we'll pack you off with these luxury travel gifts. For another chance to win a prize worth over £20,000, text PRIZE to 63232. Text costs £2 plus one standard network rate message. Or post your name and number to GB04, PO Box 8690, Derby DE19T. UK only. Entrance must be 18 or over. Lines close at 5pm on the 26th of April. Full terms and privacy notice at gbnews.com forward slash win. Please check the closing time if listening or watching on demand. Good luck. 
Are the newspapers getting you down? My wife didn't divorce me that month. <laughs> Struggling to separate the wheat from the chaff. I know that it's a bit of a circus at the best of times. <laughs> well, don't worry. Headliners has got you covered. We'll take the burden of reading the day's news, and if we get depressed, who cares? It's an occupational hazard, frankly. That's Headliners on GB News from 11pm till midnight, and the following morning, 5 till 6am, on GB News, the comedy channel. Nah, just kidding. Britain's news channel. 2024, a battleground year. The year the nation decides. As the parties gear up their campaigns for the next general election. Who will be left standing when the British people make one of the biggest decisions of their lives? Who will rise? And who will fall? Let's find out together. For every moment, the highs, the lows, the twists and turns. We'll be with you for every step of this journey. In 2024, GB News is Britain's election channel. GB News is the home of free speech. We were created to champion it, and we deliver it day in, day out. Free speech allows us all to explore and debate openly the issues most important to us, our families, and of course, the British people. Having challenging conversations to enlighten each other. Which is why we hear all sides of the argument. We are the People's Channel. We will always stand by the freedom to express yourself. On TV, radio, and online. This is GB News, Britain's news channel. Good afternoon, Britain. Good afternoon, Britain. Weekdays from midday, we bring you the most compelling stories from across the United Kingdom. And why it matters to you. From your doorstep to our inbox. That's right, we want to hear from you. Good afternoon, Britain. Only on GB News, the people's channel, Britain's news channel. I'm Martin Daubney. This is GB News, Britain's news channel. Good evening, it's nine o'clock on television, on radio and online in the United Kingdom and across the world. This is Mark Dolan tonight. In my big opinion, working is a national obligation. It's time for lazy Brits to wake up and smell the coffee. Anyone fit enough to work should be putting a shift in. As a former pub in Hull controversially becomes a 24-hour gambling venue, does Britain risk becoming a country of betting addicts? I'll be asking my Mark Meats guest, football legend Peter Shilton's wife, Steffi Shilton, who has helped Peter in his own 45-year battle against gambling. In the big story, after a humiliating double apology for telling a Londoner he looked too